Hello, welcome to another video. We have another limit problem, but this one is a little strange compared to every other thing we've done before. And I chose it because I wanted to show you all the possibilities of taking a limit. So right here, you can clearly see that X approaches two, and the first move I always say is plug in the number as long as it's finite. So if I plug in um, two into this function, I'm gonna have the natural log squared, or we say the natural log of one minus X squared. If we plug in two, this becomes the natural log of minus one. But we know that minus one is not in the domain of natural log. So if a number is not in the domain of a function, it means there is no real value of output that you could get. It has to be definitely imaginary. But the surprising thing about this limit is that the limit is actually real. Well, it's only real because we are aware that there's something called Euler's identity. We're gonna borrow it and use it and get an answer that's actually real. Let's get into the video. Okay, before we start again, remember to like this video, share this video, make sure you're subscribed if you're not, and leave a comment in the comment section. So the first thing we're gonna do is, like I said, we're gonna plug in this value. But first, look at this. You see, this expression is the same thing as the natural, uh, the limit as x approaches two of natural log of one minus x, everything squared. That's what this expression is. So it's the same thing as saying sine squared theta is the same thing as sine theta all squared. So it's not just the theta that is squared, everything in the expression is squared. One more thing I need to draw your attention to is that when you take the limit of a function, it is also the function of the limit. I've said that before. It's something that we need to recognize all the time that Instead of me writing this expression this way, I could take the limit before squaring it, okay? So look at this, because I know this doesn't exist. I mean, there's no real output. So I can say that this is the same thing as the square of the limit as x approaches two of the natural log of one minus x, everything squared. Now, this is one of the reasons I chose this problem because I wanted to show you that you could do this. The limit of a function is the function of the limit, as long as the limit exists. Okay, so look at this. So here we go, um, what can we do? Now notice that if I plug in two here, what do I get? I'm gonna get, if I plug in two, it's gonna be the natural log of one minus two, you see that? Okay, and this, let's go this way, is gonna be equal to the natural log of negative one squared. Now, this is where Euler's equation comes in because with this, Euler's identity rather, because with this, you can't go anywhere. But, if you recall that e to the i pi plus one is equal to zero. I'm sure you've seen this everywhere, okay? This simply implies that e to the i pi is equal to minus one. So I can replace this minus one with this expression and say this is equal to the natural log of e to the i pi. And then I raise it to power two. What does that tell me? So, the natural log of e to the i pi raised to power two, remember it's not this that is raised to power two, is the entire expression. So don't multiply this by two, we're raising the output to two. This i pi can come back here. This is just i pi that times ln of e. And we know that ln of e, uh, maybe I should retain my square bracket here, this way, okay. And what do I get? I get i pi squared. And what is the square of i pi? Well, it's gonna be i squared times pi squared. What is that? 
the square root of i is negative 1. The square root of pi is just pi squared. So as you can see, this limit that we have here from the beginning is equal to negative pi squared. That is the answer we've been looking for. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.